Hey, hey, what's up? How's it going? This is Neil Napier. I haven't done one of these live videos in a while, but I had some time today and a few questions came up, so I thought I'd record something for you. Just let me know if you can hear me all right, as always, in the webinar. I think everything is fine. I'm just going to bring it down a little bit so I'm closer to the mic. All right, so yeah, you're going to see, actually, let me move that back because I'm going to share, I can't seem to share my screen at the moment, so I'm going to have to use this whiteboard to share some stuff video and I think everything is is in the way it should be. So we're going to talk about stories right now because I made a post earlier today to talk about using stories in your business and your marketing and quite a few questions came up after that and Annette hit me up asking specific questions about what kind of story should she write if she's trying to sell graphics and she couldn't quite understand that. So I wanted to address her question and talk to everyone about this as well. Now this video, quite honestly, might be about 20 minutes to 30 minutes long. So make sure you strap in and watch this in its entirety because I'm going to share some very important content and I'm going to take it away after a few days because I'm going to put it up on YouTube and also turn it into an article. So that's content repurposing for you. But let's talk about stories here. So when it comes to selling, when it comes to building your online reputation, basically anything you need to be able to tell stories. Think about how you were raised when you were a kid or how you raise a kid. You tell them stories. You don't just go outright and, and say, okay, you need to cross the road on the zebra crossing. That's just the way it is. You can't do any other way. There, there are these white lines on the road and you have to cross there. You never tell that to a kid, right? You always tell a story. You say, uh, so, you know, if you don't do this, this is what's going to happen. And if you do this, this is what's going to happen. If you talk about, say, the birds and the bees, that's always a story. You don't just say, this is how sex happens. You actually turn that into a story. So we use stories throughout our lives. But for some reason, when it comes to selling, when it comes to using them in our business, it just completely falls apart. People just stop using stories because they think, hey, a story is very personal to me. It's not going to resonate with anyone else. But that's completely false because people buy your product, but they pay you for your stories. People pay you because what you say resonates with them. What you talk about is something that they've also been thinking about. They've also been going through. Now, I'm quite private when it comes to family stuff. But if I was willing to share more, if I was to share my kids growing up journey for when I have it, then, you know, a lot of people would resonate with that. Like, hey, here's a guy, here's a CEO who's really busy but is really raising a child and I go through the same problems and I want to make it work for me as well so I'll follow him, see what he's doing. So people follow you, they care about you because of your stories, because of what you have to say. So stories are not, I would say, that, that missing piece in your business and your marketing. In fact, they are the core piece of your business and your marketing and everything that you do should be built around stories. Again, Think back to being a child or, or being, you know, working, teaching a child. When you teach them, you don't just teach with logic. You don't just teach straight with emotions. You infuse some stories into it. You add some ideas, some things that are going to resonate with them. So I know a few people are watching. Just give me a holler if you're watching so I know you're here with me. And what I'll do is I'll jump over to, to this board. So I wrote it down before starting to do this. I wanted to talk about why you need to do the stories and in what context. I'll talk about story types in a little bit, and there's seven different story types, but to begin with, I wanted to talk about what is the objective of a story. So that's the very first thing you need to determine. Why am I creating this story? Or why am I putting this story out there? That's because each story has a goal. Each story has a purpose, something that it's going to fulfill for other people. And let me make sure that the audio is coming through fine and everything. That way, I know I'm not just mouthing this. Okay. Moment of truth. No comments. Can you let me know in the chat if you can just hear me all right? Just give me a yes or, or something so I know that I'm not just going to record the whole thing and it's going to crash. Do it, say it's like... So I think that's a good thing, I think, I hope. Okay, so every story needs to have an, have an objective. Stuart says, yes, thank you, Stuart, appreciate that. By the way, one of the recent additions to our guy, your family, and he's a great guy, living in Norway, actually, so not a country like me. So 
every story that you tell must have an objective. It can have more than one, that's fine. But every story, every mini story needs to have at least one objective, right? So I've broken this down into know, like, trust, sell, and then trust squared. So you build the trust again. So let's go through each and every one, and I'll talk about what kind of story you could have. So let's say we talk about no for a second. I mean, this is quite simple, right? This is about your background. So if it's for me, I'll talk about the fact that I started my online journey. Let's bring this down. I started my online journey as a, as a freelancer. And I was you know, initially exchanging time for money and I realized it wasn't scalable enough. This is why I started doing what I was doing. That's enough for people to know me. I show them a transformative thing. I mean, I don't go deep into it because I'm just running through this now, but that's a way for them to get to know me. That's the first step. The second step is I want them to like me. Now, you don't always have to get people to like you, but we are more likely to buy from someone we like than from someone we don't. That is a fact. So you want them to like you. Now, a story that I was told by, you know, which kind of peaks curiosity, peaks interest as well, right? I was told the story that there was this, uh, you know, I was walking down this, uh, this, mountain road one evening and uh, there was this uh, woman walking with a dog and the dog was misbehaving a little bit but then you know right behind me was there was a mother with a little toddler the toddler was about you know less than two year old and i don't know what happened i turn around and this this rabid dog is chasing this chasing this toddler right so i run up and i try to separate them i can't so i kick this dog in the nuts because i didn't want him to go after the kid anymore right so you're feeling kind of like I don't know. I mean, you kicked the dog. That's a negative thing. But then you also saved the baby. You also saved the toddler. So that's a good thing. Whatever instrument you can use, whatever story you can use to bring the like in that, uh, to build a light, like in that case, will help you cement the next level of relationship with your audience. Now, all of this doesn't need to happen within minutes. But if you've ever met someone at the bar, you would know that you try and go through this pretty quickly if you're trying to get laid, right? Same thing if you're trying to sell. You got to go through this process quickly. Now, depending on the price point, sometimes you might do it in 10 minutes. Sometimes and I'm talking about selling products, by the way, not the other thing. Uh, or if you if you think about trying to sell something for a thousand dollars, it's going to take you days, maybe. Right. It really depends. So the like is an important part because they will only buy from you or they will only stick with you if they like you. Then you build a trust. Right. Trust usually comes with testimonials, with other people chipping in with their stories and whatnot. So we have noticed quite often that whenever there's a testimonial posted in the Facebook group, a lot of people jump in and buy Kaivio on that day. Now, that's surprising because a lot of people here actually own Kaivio already, but some of them don't. And they're looking out for those trust factors. You know, that's why applications like Proof work so well as well. Right. So if I'm using if I'm building a story around trust, Maybe I would use a very specific story about how Veronica made, you know, 50,000 euros using Kaibu's membership area, how Benjamin made $17,000 using Kaibu Funnel Builder for physical products, or how I think it was IAB generated $65,000 worth of leads for his client by creating opt-in pages on Kaibu. So giving them those stories, giving them a breakdown of exactly how things work builds that trust. That's another story. And then you use the story to sell as well. Now, all of this is already building up to a sale. So you could argue, well, that's a one big story leading up to the sale. But when it comes to selling, it really helps to showcase and visualize what the future might be like if someone owns Skyview, if someone owns something else, if they own a course that I'm doing. So I'll talk about, imagine for a second, you were using six different applications and you had to update them all the time. You had to talk to six different support desks and it was painful, it was expensive. Now, what if you could, you only have to talk to one person and 90% of your business needs would be taken care of. What if you could do that and you wouldn't have to pay even a fraction of the price you would otherwise pay every month? Would that be of interest to you, right? That's a story as well. It's, it's a journey, right? Imagine what it would be like. What if you could be in this position? What if you could be sitting by the beach and our team would be working hard and making sure all your pages are running as fast as possible, all your customers are being taken care of. Would you like us to do that? Right, that's a story. And people appreciate that because they, even though I'm selling, I'm really building that story to build that, that association in their mind to point out that it will be good for them, right? 
hand it. So that's the selling part. Now, here comes trust squared. So whenever you sell something, again, depending on the price point, depending on the objections, you got to do a really good job at building trust again. Because if you don't do that, people will not buy it, right? So it's like this. You know, again, I'll, I'll use a pickup example. You're talking to a girl, or you're talking to a boy at a bar, and or a man or a woman, and then you decide, okay, you know, they. it's kind of like a mini interview. They listen to all your stories, they're impressed, they're like, sure, you know, it sounds pretty good, but I have this objection, but I have this thing I want to know more about, right? That's where the trust squared element comes in. And now here, you need a ton of stories. Here, you need a lot of stories where you spend a lot of time just overcoming one objection after the other. So think about every objection they can have. And I'll use Annette's example in this case, right? And she's building out a sales page, so I'll talk about the sales page. So Annette wants to sell logos. So I don't know if she's selling custom design logos or she's selling like 25 logos a month. But let's assume she's selling 25 logos a month to businesses. And bear in mind, the very first objection would be, but I only need one, right? Fair, fair objection. So she has to build a story around this. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I only need one logo. Why can't I just get one? Well, that's fine as well. You can get one if you want. The thing is, what I found is that a lot of businesses that usually thrive, that usually grow and you need new logos all the time because they're creating multiple products. And you might realize that, you know, you don't completely want to use one logo, but you might want to use another one and some colors from it, some, some things from it, and you get access to those as well. And it's yours to keep. I mean, maybe she'll make an offer and she'll say you can resell them if you want to, right? That will help them overcome that objection. That's another way to make money. Maybe the second thing, second objection that they have is um, I don't want to pay monthly, right? In which case, Annette could diffuse that by saying that, hey, you can cancel any time. That's perfectly fine. But if you do pay monthly, then every third month, I'll create a custom logo for you. And they'll be like, wow, that's pretty cool, right? Every three months, we get a custom logo created just for ourselves. That's fantastic. Maybe another objection they have, and again, I'm kind of selling this, but, but again, build a story around this, right? That we find that whenever customers stick around with us for long enough, they like our logos, they like our style, and they want to get a custom logo created. Now, typically, for one of our past clients, we've charged $1,000 for that, just that work alone. But I can do this, you know, we can do this for you at a much lower cost. And here's how, right? So that's your story as well. Then another objection, and I'm going to use this as final objection, could be uh, like, hey, all this sounds really good, but, you know, i got to talk to my partner about this. Say, that's fine. I mean, if you're selling this on a sales page and the price point is low, that really shouldn't be an objection. But if, but if that is an objection, they kind of just want to, you know, go away and think about it for a little bit, right? That's where you use scarcity that we found that typically businesses that need logos done, they done these logos done immediately, right? And usually then they end up paying more because the same price isn't available anymore or they need custom work done. So what I would recommend to you, because it's such a small investment, invest just a little bit so that that way when you really need it in the future, you have the whole asset available to you. So use that excuse. So stories really, really help. Again, if you're thinking about building a sales page, a sales video, a webinar uh, presentation, for example, what really helps to really deepen the impact points is having a story to associate with them. We always remember stories so well. Think back to your kindergarten days, your childhood days. I'm sure you remember one or two stories you heard, right? But do you actually remember the last sales pitch you hated? You probably don't even remember that. You have to think hard about it, right? And that's the key difference between having stories and not having stories, right? But let's go in deeper because what I want to do now is I want to give you seven story examples or scenarios that you can use. Now, these have been done over and over again, so it's not like I'm the first person to have come up with them. I mean, if you just Google seven story types, you'll find a ton of different blog articles about it. And all these story types are created to elicit one or more of these emotions that I talked about. No, like, trust, sell, trust, and more. So the very first thing is the David versus Goliath scenario, right? The underdogs. 
and every new company uses it at some point or the other to build empathy with the audience, to build trust and to share that they really mean it. One of the one of the biggest advertisements, and I can't share my screen at the moment, but one of the biggest advertisements that, uh, let me see if the video is coming through fine, yeah. One of the biggest advertisements that, I think it was a secondhand store for Aston Martin. I think it was Aston Martin or Mercedes or BMW, I can't remember, one of those cars. So they ran an ad with a really beautiful girl, you know, standing in a very seductive outfit in the, I think she wasn't cooking anything, but she was in the kitchen, right? But it didn't have that that impact, that that idea. But she was really beautiful. It was a very seducting, seductive image. And the the title literally said, you know you're not the first, but do you really care? Right? And that drives, I mean, it's a tiny story, two lines, but that drives a very, very strong message. That secondhand cars from Aston Martin, from Mercedes, from BMW, are freaking awesome. Even if you can't afford to buy firsthand, no worries. No one would walk away from a secondhand either, and neither should you. And people bought that. That's David versus Goliath. That be, that's people saying, hey, we know you can't afford this, but what if we help you? Right? It's the same with Kaivir quite often. Quite often it's Kaivir against ClickFunnels, right? We didn't create that competition. Actually, ClickFunnels did that for us. But quite often it comes down to that. It's the David versus Goliath story. How hard can a small guy punch? Sure, he'll get knocked out, but he'll stand up again and again and again. And that's what the David versus Goliath is about. That's what the story is about where you are fighting, you, you fight till you die basically, right? The second story type is about the quest, which is quite often also referred to as the hero's journey. So hero's journey is always, you know, I, I struggle quite a lot and, um, you know, then it typically starts in a fashion where you start at a very kind of poor state. You know, a lot of IMers use that, like I was in a really bad state. Uh, and then I accidentally stumbled across this. And even though I was sleeping in my car and I was doing this and I was doing that, I was still able to work really hard and, and create this business empire for me. And now you can do it too, because I'm giving you my secrets, right? So that's like the hero's journey. And that works really well as well. Pick a story. I mean, if it fits you, this is really good for building the trust as well, because it shows people that they come from the same place where, or the, the seller comes from the same place where they are at the moment. I mean, in politics, Trump used the same idea. You know, sure, he's a multimillionaire and he's a president, but he became that by really empathizing with people, by telling them that he understood their pain. And again, I'm not going into the politics. I'm just telling you that that's exactly what he did. And it worked. People liked it. Right? The next thing is then the journey and the return. So this is more like kind of imagine going, you know, imagine doing so well that you can just kind of sit back and relax and, you know, you're at the beach and then you come back all refreshed, right? You bring people back into the current state then, but with a better mindset. This is future positioning that I talked about when we were discussing about selling, right? This is future positioning, but with the idea to bring them back. Like imagine what your, you know, 40 year successful self would say to you. So you've already been there, imagine. And now you're back. What advice are you going to give to yourself? How is life different now? Do you look at things differently? That's the return, like the journey and the return, right? You come back. So if I think about uh, Lord of the Rings, a lot of it was about the quest, right? A lot of it was about the quest. If I think about the Harry Potter, a lot of it was about the David versus Goliath, right? But if I think about movies like, I don't know, I think A Few Good Men, that was about the journey, right? That was about getting a result and then coming back and then kind of being happy with that result. It was about achieving something and then enjoying it. It's not just blind ambition that keeps on growing, you enjoy it. And that's another way to, to create that story. Then the other one is rags to riches. And again, this is a little bit close to, I would say, the hero's journey. But think about Cinderella, right? Think about a poor girl with no money, no luck, suddenly had a, you know, fairy grandmother who waved a wand on her head and she, she suddenly, you know, became this beautiful semi-princess, right? And who almost lost it, 
at the end almost lost it, but then gained it back because everything worked in her favor because it had to. So you can use that racks to riches story as well in your marketing when you're trying to sell. The other one is comedy. Now comedy always works, but you gotta be good at this. Not everyone can do it. I'm not very good at it. I try, but I'm not very good at it. But comedy lightens the mood, especially if it's a serious subject. If you are selling something that people have been quiet, you know, scammed at previously, if you can joke, if you can entertain them, they're gonna love you for that, right? And you can build like hilarious stories around, around what you do. Okay, so you can do that as well. Then tragedies work quite well as well. Romeo and Juliet, right? It's a story of tragedy. Now, it's not selling us anything, but it's still saying love is awesome. And that's the output of the story. The goal is to show you that love is awesome, no matter who or what you are. And that's exactly what it's showcasing as well. So you can use tragedy in your business as well. Now, it doesn't have to be your own. It could be someone else's, right? I do though know someone who, you know, first time I met him, he was a happiness coach. And I first time I met him, he told me about his tragic story. And that actually makes you like him more because he's coming from a position of, I'm humble. You know, I'm not braggadocious. I'm not going to talk about millions of dollars that I made or this mansion that I lived in, but I'm going to talk about how I failed. And, you know, we human beings like tragedy. We, we love tragedy. We love Romeo and Juliet. That's what that's about. And finally, you can have kind of like rebirths as well, right? Rebirth is where, again, you, you've undergone that failure, but the failure happened early on. You spend a lot more time than rebuilding it. And that you show more about that. So Lion King, perfect story of rebirth, right? Where the kid lost his way, I mean, because, you know, his, his father was killed, if you don't know, by the way, spoiler alert. But Simba, I think it was Simba, or his father was killed and, you know, he lost his way. And then finally he came back and he was able to regain the life that truly belonged to him. But that was a very difficult journey as well. But that was rebirth, right? So you can use that as well. But what you need to be able to do is incorporate all of this in your business. You need to be able to bring all of this in. You don't need to do pick all of them, right? Just pick one of the seven, two of the seven, whatever you want. But during different stages of your, of your pitch, I would say of your video, of your sales page, you can have one or more of these stories, right? Let me see if there are questions. I've heard about the hero story too often already. Exactly, the hero story is quite, let me just move that around. The hero story is quite overused, so, but it still works. I mean, you know, there's no reason why it wouldn't work. But I would say just pick something that suits you and work that into your marketing. Work that into your business. If you're selling something, let's say beyond designs, if you think about it, if you're selling yoga training, you know, help. It's so easy in hell to talk about rebirth. It's so easy to talk about how when I was young, I could eat all the pizzas that I wanted. I could have as much beer as I wanted and it wouldn't affect my weight at all. You know, I would get back into shape quickly. But, and I kept doing that in my 30s and then I realized that wait, I wasn't you know, losing that weight quickly anymore. And I had this kind of beer belly and I had to get rid of it. So what could I do? Well, I went to India. I learned yoga, right? That's the story of rebirth. Eat, pray, love is all about rebirth. If you've read that, if you've seen that. And that's still selling the idea of transformation, right? Four hour work week is a story. Of course, it's all about creating that efficiency, but it's also about, you know, kind of that, that conquest of being able to automate most of your business and then it's selling you onto something after that. Yeah, rise of the Phoenix stuff. Yeah, rise of the Phoenix. All right, but cool, that's it, Stefan. We got to make plans for next week, uh, for the coming week. But yes, thanks for watching, everyone. Like I said, I'll take this off in a little bit and I'll put it up on YouTube after. So if you have any questions, make sure you watch it and uh, I'll be happy to answer those for you. All right.